Alright guys, it is another gloomy gray day here in the end times in paradise in St. Croix Virgin Islands. We have survived another weekend and stumbled <coughs> into Monday morning, March 7th, 2016 I believe it is. <coughs> and Monday morning is the morning I bring you my economic meltdown roundup rant where I go on the pages of the mainstream media, in this case Yahoo News, to bring you several examples just from today's headlines how the global industrial economy is bringing down a planet for anybody who does not understand that it is the global industrial economy. The, uh, certainly uh, one, one of the major threats to a planet it seems like the mainstream media is mainly looking at the collapse of Asia. Most of the stories out of Asia, good Lord, I got like a dozen stories. But let's just start out on our, on our, in our own country and work our way over the ocean. Let's start out in Oregon. Oregon to release soil test results in pollution scare this week. Oregon officials this week will release test results on soil from neighborhoods near two Portland glass factories accused of spewing toxic metals into the air for years, a revelation that has led to a class action suit and demands for more oversight. The results of the testing could heighten suspicions from residents and environmental advocates that emissions of arsenic and cadmium from the two factories expose residents to much higher levels of the heavy metals than have been told. You think so? Uh, this is uh, Miriam Elman from Natural Resources Defense Council. Communities are left testing their soil, testing their children, testing their homes, and saying, how come I, s and saying, well, how come I see these contaminations? That's not how it should be. Do you think so? There is already ample evidence from tests of contamination near the factories as well as signs that metals may have settled into the soil. That see, we, these new tests found levels of arsenic 150 times higher and cadmium 50 times higher than Oregon safety benchmarks and looks about the same both of these uh, good God y y you know it just goes on and on and of course as this one resident I guess who has been warned not to eat any vegetables from gardens uh, within a half mile of these factories this is Carrie Ryan who lives five blocks away, quote, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Yes, it is, and this is a story being repeated all over this country, all over this planet. <sighs> Jesus, but before we head over across the Pacific, let's go a little south of the U.S., what the news is from uh, <clears throat> Latin America this week. Slain indigenous environmental activists buried in Honduras. Uh, a large crowd in Honduras accompanied the body of Beta Carceres to its final resting place on Saturday amid calls for justice in this week's killing of the indigenous leader and environmental activist. She was uh, one of the, uh, she was awarded the 2015, just last year, Carceres, 45, was awarded the 2015 Goldman Environmental Prize for her role in fighting a hydroelectric 
dam project uh, by these planet eaters, probably from China, I'm just guessing, down there in Honduras, had complained of death threats from police, the army, and landowners. She was slain early Thursday by gunmen who broke into her home and shot her. This is her mother, I mean her daughter, quote, my mother died because she defended the land and rivers of her country. Yes, um, yeah, I'm sure this is true. Honduran President Juan Orlando Hernandez says authorities are investigating Carceres killing and Foreign Minister Arturo Corrales vowed Friday that justice would be served. According to the website of the Goldman Environmental Prize, Carceres, quote, waged a grassroots campaign that successfully pressured the world's largest dam builder to pull out of the Agua Zarca Dam. It said that the uh, dam project threatened to, quote, cut off the supply of water, food, and medicine for hundreds of these indigenous people and violate their right to sustainably manage and live off their land. And you see, this is what you will get if you go up against these planet eaters. You will get gunmen breaking into your home and shooting you dead. Is there anyone who does not understand this? Okay, but let's just move over to the collapse of Asia. Uh, and good Lord, this is kind of picking up um, from my ecological meltdown roundup rant. On Friday, I see Associated Press has picked up this story. <clears throat> Indonesia's anti-graft agency pushes plan to tackle deforestation and fires. I was saying on Friday how this new Indonesian anti-graft agency was taking on the mining sector in Indonesia. Indonesia's anti-graft commission on Monday this morning said government agencies have agreed on a plan to combat corruption in the forest industry that cost the state billions of dollars in lost revenue and is behind fires that pollute Southeast Asia. Yes, anybody who believes uh, <laughs> the Indonesian anti-graft agency. Uh, anyway, enough, enough of that unadulterated horseshit. And maybe the reason that that is such a joke has something to do with this next headline. I check in every morning with the price of palm oil and we see palm oil hits yet another high this week. I think this is the fourth earnings in a row that uh, Malaysian palm oil futures jumped on Monday to their highest in a week. Blah, 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 up 1.32%. Yes, it, it is all, the, the future is so bright for palm oil investors. Yes, okay, which may or may not have something to do with the Indonesian Anti-Graft Agency. Well, here in India, according to ABC News, we have signs 
of trouble as Monsanto threatens to pull out of India. U.S. seed giant Monsanto has threatened to pull its genetically modified crop technology from India if the government goes ahead with its plan to cut the company's royalty fees. Yes, uh, we, we will uh, see how uh, about this threat. Yes, uh, uh, and I'm sure that, that millions uh, of Indians would be cheering uh, Monsanto threatening to pull out of uh, India. Leading the charge would be my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero. What's that woman's name? Von Diva Shiva or whatever her name is. Uh, you know, yeah, Monsanto pulling out of India. Uh, I anybody who believes for one second that Monsanto is going to pull out of India got one thing to tell you. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Please. Unadulterated horseshit. Anyway, as long as we're talking about GMOs over there in Asia, let's see, while, while Monsanto is threatening to pull out of India, what's the news for Monsanto from the Philippines today from Reuters News? Philippines signs new GMO rules, food industry relieved. The food industry is relieved that the Philippine government is uh, loosening its rules on GMO foods as a way to feed its growing populations. Hmm. The Philippines has approved a new set of rules on genetically modified organisms after a top court demanded an overall of previous regulations that were unfriendly to Monsanto. So now Monsanto with the Filipino courts in its pockets demanding an overhaul of GMO unfriendly re re regulations providing relief to farmers and importers, otherwise known as Monsanto and that gang, worried that any delay would spark a food crisis in uh, the Philippines. Mm -hmm. The new rules will now be forwarded to the Department of Agriculture and will likely take effect in April. Greenpeace on Monday said it would take further action against the new GMO guidelines. Yes, good luck on that. Yes, Greenpeace. Uh, GMO's critics argue the technology poses risk to public health, while advocates say such fears have not been scientifically proven in that high-yielding genetically altered crops would help ensure food security as the world's population grows and I, I say this every time I do this rant a oh, week after week after week and uh, that's I, I'm still on the fence about the effects of the GMOing on all of this stuff itself that tinkering 
what this is all about never mentioned in this story. You never see the word Monsanto in this story is that what the vast majority of this tinkering is is to pave the way for just ramping up the amount of herbicides and pesticides and all of this big agrochemical shit being dumped on these crops. Uh, anyway, uh, let's go over from the Philippines to India as we see this little uh, footnote from the end times in India from AP thousands of dead fish wash up on the banks of India River. <clears throat> thousands of dead fish wa wash up on the banks <clears throat> of a polluted lake. It's either a river or a lake. It's probably both. The banks of a polluted lake on Monday in India's southern technology hub of Bangalore. A stink pervaded the air in a residential district around Alsur Lake in central Bangalore as sewage has been flowing into the lake, depleting its oxygen. Yes, uh, and these fish huggers said authorities have ignored pleas to repair a barrier that was supposed to keep sewage from flowing in the lake. Yeah, I, I bet. Uh, last year, flames were seen in another polluted lake in the city. More, and then the last sentence of the, of the article, for anyone who does not understand this, more than half of India's 1.2 billion people still defecate in the open in the open causing rivers and lakes to stink with sewage river from rivers and lakes still stinking with sewage let's go over i guess i don't know if this is going on over, would you call this China or Tibet? As China says, new Tibetan railway project will not harm the environment. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Tibet's environment will not be damaged by the construction of a second railroad linking the remote area to the rest of China, the region's deputy Communist Party boss said on Monday. Hmm. Critics have expressed concern over the environmental impact of the first railway to Lhasa, opened 10 years ago, which passes spectacular icy peaks on the Tibetan highlands and reaches altitudes of over 16,000 feet above sea level. But don't worry, according to the Padma Choling, this planet eater, quote, the ecological environment of Tibet will not be harmed. The railway will be built under the condition of environmental protection. That is for sure. You can't just say, don't build it. Uh, I have one word for this planet eater. Don't build it. Okay. Uh, several stories on uh, versions of this story, in, in, including both versions. But finally, we have, uh, we have the Chinese government, for the first time in history probably, being honest. There's actually, I mean, right on the, the news this morning, there are these unadulterated horseshit stories that China's 
emissions dropped, dropped, and, and uh, or peaked. It peaked in 2014. This unadulterated horseshit going around, uh, and 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 people pulling out their bullshit button. Anyone who believes that China's emissions peaked in 2014 got one thing to tell you. But but guess who's pushing the bullshit button on the new story? How about the Chinese government? China's carbon emissions still increasing. China's carbon emissions did not peak in 2014 and are still increasing. China's senior climate change envoy, Xi Zhenyua, said at a press conference on Monday. He said his government's pledge that emissions would peak around 2030 is based on national conditions and has a direct relationship with the country's economic development. Do you think so? A study published on Monday and still floating around here right next to this story said China's emissions, the world's highest, may have peaked in 2014. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, and see if you can connect that story to this story. From Reuters News, several versions of this story. China sets cap for energy consumption for the first time. China aims to keep energy consumption within I, I can't make this shit up this is this is the the cap of the Chinese energy use how about this one China aims to keep its energy consumption within five billion tons five billion tons of the technical term standard coal equivalent by 2020. And, and guys, I'm making sure you understand this, that it will lower, it will, in the next five years, China is now, is now aiming, not quite promising, aiming to lower its energy consumption to five billion tons of standard coal equivalent and uh, it's unclear what that term means and it, it but it, it it means the same amount of shit being spewed into the air that five billion tons would spew into the air is what they're talking about yes uh, China has long been consider considering an energy consumption cap to tackle smog and control greenhouse gas emissions, which are the highest in the world. Uh, yes, that's of course, energy consumption will be less than 5 billion tons if China's structural adjustment goes smoothly. There's a, uh, th there's a big if. Uh, Jesus. Five billion, cutting it to five billion times. But uh, if, if you're not already running out to put your, uh, to put your money into palm oil and bottled water, uh, to make money in the end times, here is another no-brainer to make money in the end times. Uh, talk about a silver lining in the black clouds of the billowing smokestacks uh, from China industry. We have this story to close out this rant. Anyone who acts like there's not a silver lining in all of this. Chinese smog has silver lining for mask makers.
these steel plants and cement factories scattered across China's Shandong province have made it one of the most contaminated areas of the world's biggest polluter. But for one company, that m makes the business climate even better. This is Ace SL Masks turned out more than 100,000 face coverings last year and aims to more than double that number in 2016 as China struggles to shake off the toxic smog produced by its heavy industries. I love this. At ASL's facility, shabby buildings bearing faded signs from the 1980s exhorting, quote, scientific innovation are barely visible through the haze where pollution levels were six times international standards when this reporter from the French news service visited. Yes, uh, there you go. Anybody who says it is all doom and gloom in the end times, obviously not investing in Chinese anti-smog face mask, bottled water, palm oil, Monsanto is another damn good place to put your money. Uh, Dow Chemical Agro Chemical Division getting ready to release about 10 billion tons of Agent Orange to dump on the planet. Uh, that's another good place. These are my Hambones Monday morning stock tips for the collapse of a planet. But I gotta wrap up this rant and head back to the Eco Lodge kitchen because I'm overdue for some pancakes for the end times. Bye, guys. I don't know where my little dog is. I guess he's already headed back to the kitchen. I'm gonna come back with you when I get some internet back and talk about uh, economic hitman John Perkins new book but I can't do that rant from here this one bye guys